Together, terracing and trees already have a huge positive impact on food production, and with all the spare time enabled by the sand dams and trees, farmers can do more to develop their farms in order to increase food production, generate an income and achieve food security. Let's take a look now at how communities improve their farming to create sustainability by implementing techniques such as zero grazing, intercropping and diversifying crops such as fruit and vegetables. Producing milk and honey also helps sustainability along with a different sort of bank for seeds. Dams allow animals to be better watered and fed, which improves milk yields and meat production, and therefore incomes. Zero grazing livestock means that you feed and water them in a pen. Therefore, you create manure to fertilize the soil. When I keep my animals in my cow shed, I just do a circle thing. All the manure comes to my shamba and all the shamba stuffs goes back to my animals. So it's one way of rotating whatever I have. This is organic farming, but out of economic necessity. By using the manure from their animals, farmers avoid having to resort to spending cash on fertilizers, money they can ill afford. Farmers here traditionally practiced mixed cropping, effectively doubling the field space. Unfortunately though, intercropping has been discouraged by government extension officers who are in favor of Western methods of single cropping. Excellent development field officers work with farmers to encourage the mixed cropping of staple crops, which complement each other with their different ground coverage and root networks. So many people in the last few years or many years we are told not to intercrop by the government people. And I do this against the government will. And the funny thing is that when they come to see my shamba, they always get surprised of what I'm doing because my yield seems to be more better than the people who doesn't intercrop. So, yields increase for a number of reasons. More moisture is retained in the soil and the greater coverage lowers soil temperatures. Intercropping also means that you leave some land fallow and even get natural pest control. For example, onion plants protect tomatoes from green fly. In addition, excellent development encourage farmers to grow a wider range of traditional food crops like sorghum, millet, pigeon peas and cow peas, reducing the risk of failed harvests, particularly as their species more suited to the dry areas. Demonstration plots are set up and tended by each self-help group, enabling them to grow seeds to distribute to all their members. The water from the dams also enables farmers to grow vegetables like tomatoes and greens, not only improving diets, but providing income that can be used for school fees. I had no any plan for planting anything like tomatoes because Thinking of planting tomatoes without sand dam, it was a daydream. But when uh, Excellent Development came and shown the sites and we, we constructed that sand dam, is when my mind start, started awakening up. First time I planted, I planted 140 plants. That one uh, we eat around here. Community were coming to buy small of them. Next time, I planted 350, but last one, that one I got something. What did you get? Because 2,800 shillings, Kenyan shillings, whereby I used to take the tomatoes to school, where my child is schooling, then it was counted as a money, because that tomato is cooked to, to school. Communities in the drier, less fertile areas can only afford goats. Farmers can participate in a program to improve their goat breeds, breeding their goats with Toggenberg goats to eventually quadruple milk yields. More trees on the farm have enabled some farmers to become beekeepers, providing honey to improve health and incomes. Other farmers plant fruit trees such as papaya, mango or passion fruit, or trees with medicinal qualities, which again save them money. 
By growing a wider range of crops, including fruit and vegetables, farmers can feed themselves and create a surplus, selling it when they want to, where they want to, and at a price that they decide. Excellent don't encourage the growing of traditional cash crops like coffee. They require high inputs of labor, fertilizers and pesticides. In Kenya, farmers have no choice over whom to sell it to or at what price, and they often make no profit. Call a market. 25 years ago, it was an open market and there was hardly anything to sell. Every Friday, like today, there's a great deal of produce that is coming from here and this community has learned to produce what they consume and to consume what they produce. Drought, flooding or variable rains can all cause crops to fail, which can mean farmers have no seeds to plant or food to harvest. Following the drought of 2005-2006, Excellent Development launched a seed bank program whereby farmers agree to return more seeds than they are given when they harvest. This enables farmers to create a secure source of seeds to protect themselves against crop failures or a lack of cash to buy seeds. The seed bank program that Excellent Development Kenya has is to enable the groups on the marginal areas of Machakos and Makuen to bulk their own seed, to enable them to plant and return back to their stores. If you give them two kilos, we expect them to return two kilos plus extra harvest from them so that in the future we can be able to help another community elsewhere. So to retrace our steps, creating potential through soil and water conservation enables farmers to improve production, incomes and food security. And that is sustainable farming. Well, that concludes this film on creating sustainable farming in semi-arid Africa. Here are some questions for you, which should be easier to answer now that you've seen the film. Thanks for watching.